Uh, hi, everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to see you all, at least on the screen. Um, I would like to come back, start by coming back to some of the issues we've discussed, we've heard about already. The main point that we've been working on is trying to connect water and heritage. And these are largely different, distinct fields, which also means we have to acknowledge that there are very different groups working on water and working on heritage. So one call to ECOMOS may be to say, be aware of what else is going on in the water world. And people keep on saying the water world is very fast and the heritage world is much slower. So we have to kind of find a, uh, a shared pace. Now, what we've already been hearing about is that we want to look both at fresh and salt water, both of which are part of our tangible and intangible heritage. And that also brings nature and culture very clearly together. And you see that there's from all scales, from the building scale to the landscape scale, from the tangible to the intangible, water and heritage um, are interconnected. And these water systems are changing, as we all know, as you've seen in the film. So in order to intervene in our future and improving the relation between water and heritage, we have to have a better understanding of the past, of the objects and practices that have been there, and to use them to inspire new designs. So preservation is definitely one part of the story, but there also needs to be a change in lifestyles, in uh, mindscapes, in approaches, in practices. So this is what we already see. This was the Hurricane Harvey in, in the US. The environment uh, and water are interconnected. It just takes a storm, another storm, to um, swamp, to, to, to flood entire areas. And often these areas, in this case, were close to petroleum sites where all this wastewater was then flooding the neighborhoods themselves. The question is, can we still have more technological solutions? So most recently, we've seen this proposal for a new dam between Scotland, Norway, France, and England. So this has been a, a technological paradigm that we followed for many decades, thinking that we just have to bring in more technology, more engineering, even more concrete to make uh, us safe from the water. So is that the solution? And one of the problems I think we've been seeing is even in the uh, sustainable development goals, culture itself was not really mentioned. But in order to have a paradigm change where culture and also heritage knowledge is much more present, we have to work the work aspects of culture into the sustainable development goals and reinterpret them. And that's exactly what UNESCO did recently by pu publishing its thematic indicators for culture in the 2030 agenda. So we can be using these kinds of tools, discussions, uh, ongoing indi or indicators in the making here to promote the theme that we're working on, which is water and heritage. We already have, as you've seen before, a number of books, the latest one Tino just brought out. Uh, and it's important as we work on this that we both have to rethink water and rethink heritage. So in the first, in the third book that we brought out, we looked at water from different perspectives, drinking water, agricultural water, water and land reclamation and defense, river and coastal water, port cities and waterfronts. And all of these levels, water is one big interconnected uh, system. And that also means we have to rethink heritage. Heritage not just as a unique dot, a specific building, but rather something that is interconnected through water and that is everywhere, that's unique and vernacular. So it goes from object to network. We have to rethink it from preservation to reuse and design. And it's no longer just about description, it's also about living with water or water heritage. Uh, and it means we have to bridge between academic and public. It's not just having new books coming out that are not connected to the uh, actual work of the, the water managers or the professionals. 
And I think there's an opportunity to also bring in the digital and bring in more um, larger knowledge, larger knowledge bases and big data. I just wanted to show you a nice picture because I've been showing you all these awful pictures, uh, you might say so far, or the, the big challenges and the big structures. But I've, been sh I've selected this picture in particular, not because there's a windmill that everybody will think about when you see the Netherlands, but because of the building in the front, the full molen or the wool mill. And looking at this building makes it evident why we have to think of water heritage as a system and a network. This building up front created some hundred years of debate, discussion, political trouble in the Netherlands. There were actually two mills of the so water mills. This is the remnant of a water mill. Uh, and this one was set up to uh, transform wool. Now, this mill was driven by water, which should be fine, right? The problem is that these two water-based mills put, got the water out of the river and led it into the polder, into the deep lying areas of the Netherlands. And another neighborhood, another area needed five windmills to get the water out again, which had been used in the city of Gouda to treat the wool they needed. So basically they, this mill was shuffling the water into the I'm going to say the, the neighborhood into the yard of your neighbor, and then you have the neighbor take care of getting it back out again. And it, as I said, it took several hundred years to resolve this as a political problem. So it's fine if we see these uh, as specific buildings, but we really need to recognize them as a system. And here is the explanation, it's in Dutch, about what this mill was doing, why and how, and only so built um, only in 1869 did they resolve this political problem behind, the wind, behind this particular water mill. So we need to work with tools such as the historic urban landscape approach to understand what the role and opportunities of uh, heritage are in the context of the larger city and the landscape. So we can ident identify the role of a building, but just as with the example of the water mill, it has to be put next to a greater setting of what does the city need, what other, in this case, water-related actions are needed. And perhaps an example like Naples is, a, is an intriguing one because we've got here the waterfront of, of Naples. There is the port is, basically stuck in front of the historic city and the, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So how do you negotiate both the needs of the port and the needs of the historic city, which are now separated by a really a highway that serves like a wall and prevents the citizens from accessing the water line. But it also means in terms of solving this problem, if you wanted to find you have to find a new place for the port, which means negotiations with the city on the region in the hinterland. So solving the heritage problem may actually mean making the port or providing the port with alternative sites in the larger region. So in that sense, I think the historic urban landscape approach is very important, is a very important tool to rethink particularly the question of um, water and heritage. We've started to also think about institutional connections. So this is the first attempt to think about the main stakeholders, public, private, academic, professional, just in the Netherlands, to see who should be talking to who and where are they actually located. So that we can hopefully help bring together the relevant stakeholders. And Ian showed an international map before. So the idea would be, could we not only have this kind of a play together of different professional, public, academic, professional um, uh, entities, but also have that for different countries and then ultimately get the people around the world talking to each other so that we can bridge the divide between the professional and the academic, between the forward-looking 
or future-oriented disciplines and the ones that are also interested in heritage. And one way of doing that is a so-called MOOC that we are currently working on. A MOOC is a massive online open course. And this is an invitation to, to everyone who might be interested uh, to get in touch and say, tell me what you would like to do or how you would be interested as both participant or as a learner in the course. The, uh, the way it's set up now is that we will have one uh, of these courses on port cities and urban deltas, which is also where most of the citizens around the world live in, and a second one on adaptive strategies for waterscapes. In the longer term, I would like, so these will be relatively short five week courses where the idea is to make people aware of the intersections between space, society, and culture. So the role that historic heritage buildings, practices can play in the understanding and the rethinking of our um, landscapes and for, for future challenges. And then in the longer term, we could build upon it and have more specific professional education courses or more specific uh, of these massive online open courses for select topics. We can imagine that there will even after Corona be on-site workshops in this direction. The overarching goal, and I really would like to show you a pretty picture to, to look into the, uh, to look forward to, the idea is that we have to create, recreate what I would call maritime mindsets. Thus an idea, how do we, about how we live with water and seeing water as an opportunity. And these maritime mindsets in this case, it's a port city. It could be a water mindset, if you want to call it that way. But an awareness for people, where is water in our environment? How, what does it mean for my specific lifestyle? If I have a, um, a, a water a river or something in my backyard, how is that connected throughout the country where I'm living in? If I, uh, what are the just injustices or inequalities that result from water access or not, and how can we use heritage, both physical heritage, tangible heritage, but also depictions of this kind of, uh, well here, imagined heritage, to recreate and strengthen the cultural approach towards water and heritage. Thank you very much. <laughs>